Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video, vlog number 13, August 30th, 2019 and uh, holy cow, the unofficial end to summer is this weekend, Labor Day weekend and yeah, that went quick guys, uh, but I still like to see summer go into the end of September, September's a beautiful time here, uh, so uh, definitely get out and get your dubs out, this is great weather to drive guys, so if you can get your, your buggy out, your V-dub, anything like that. They love this weather, so. <laughs> All right, so where are we at? Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, keep this content rolling, and there's a small PayPal donation link in the description below, and for the price of a cup of coffee, you guys can send us a small little donation to keep our channel alive and keep me giving you this content uh, week after week. So uh, whatever you can throw at us uh, is much appreciated, and we uh, we thank you for that. So, so real quick, um, August thirtieth, guys. Holy cow! I am already up to my year anniversary of being married for one year. Man, like that <laughs> that went so fast. I can't believe how fast uh, twenty nineteen is going, and uh, it, it just feels like it was yesterday. So uh, I'm definitely hitting up my second honeymoon. We're heading away the, this weekend. For a good amount of time to just get away and heading back to Aruba, uh, which I can't wait. And uh, Pops will still be at the shop. Ramsey will still be there. Still keep things going because we're busy as hell, and I need to get so much going and so much finished. But um, so what I want to talk about is uh, just to follow up from the the video last week I made in regards to the quality of workers today. Um, it seems like that resonated uh, pretty well with the with you guys in the community and I got a lot of great comments and for the most part everybody feels yeah um, it's true you know it's uh, it's pretty sad but um, I do want to point out that or state that look not everybody of course um, not every kid coming out of college is like that not every uh, you know person is like that but for the most part from what we've seen from what other uh, fellows that I know in business, my sister with her restaurants, um, even my friend, my good friend Lucky Larry with his uh, his business, we're going through, you know, workers that are just, I don't know, you know, again, it's, it's that entitlement attitude or something, or it's that feeling like, you know, everybody's, it wants to feel they're special, um, which is fine, I mean, you know, mommy and daddy, you know, told us we're special, and I get it, <laughs> my mom too, I was the only boy, I got four sisters, so believe me, but um, you know, once you get out to the real world, you know, things start to change, but anyway, just wanted to point out that, look, not everybody, of course, so um, one of the one topic I wanted to talk about today before I get to work, and I'll probably take the rest of the time here, is um, the delusion or the um, smoke screen or kind of the BS that's thrown at uh, viewers who watch classic car or car restoration shows. Now, I don't know if you guys know, several years ago we had a producer from uh, associated with Spike TV come to the shop. And then um, a couple years ago we had a fella come down from the, the Discovery Velocity channel to talk with us about, again, a show. Now, for the most part, um, you know, they want the drama. They want, they wanted Pops and I to throw crap at each other and curse at uh, each other and, you know, throw wrenches and bring up the drama that they see, that they show in these reality shows. And uh, we weren't, we were not doing that. Uh, and I don't care, you know, how much of a payment it was. I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that because you guys see me here online and I just talk off my chest. I don't have a script. You know, uh, I'm, I'm known as the happy-go-lucky bug guy. And I'm here to just give that kind of content. You know, we were steering more towards, you know, a mixture of chasing classic cars and wheeler dealers. Which I think when you put those two together, yeah, we go out and hunt for the Beetle. It could be an international thing because the car is an international car. Uh, so we can go to all different countries even to find the Beetle and, and whatnot. Um, and then also then bringing it back, restoring it, and giving you the how-tos, giving you the tips like you see in Wheeler Dealers. So that's kind of the angle we were going with, and um, 
the international side of it all could have really made the show lengthy because uh, you could go all over the world because the Beatle was international. Uh, so again, that kind of didn't fly and uh, yeah, uh, they wanted some drama and we weren't going to do it. And then um, earlier this year or last year, we did do a sit down also for a possible uh, Netflix series, which was more uh, I think up our alley like we were saying, you know, the dip, you know, kind of like um, If you ever seen the show chef's table, which is like really cool show on Netflix with these high-end chefs that that do these uh, you know gourmet uh, Meals these $500 meals and things like that and they have these high-end restaurants and, But then you have some you know backyard guys that do some amazing food as well But they got into the art of it. They got into the essence of it And that's kind of the angle we would love to do you know, with our show, kind of like that, but anyways, what I'm trying to get to is, is uh, we saw something that was uh, once on uh, Discovery Channel or, or Velocity Channel, I'm sorry, History Channel in Canada, and is now on Netflix, so they basically grabbed it from the hi uh, Canada History Channel and put it to Netflix as making a series out of it, and I thought maybe it would have been, you know, off the, the format of what's on you know, pay tele or cable television, and it really wasn't. Um, and again, it's all about the dumbasses, and you know, everybody's a badass, and everyone's you know, you know, got their arms crossed, and everybody's cursing at this guy, that guy. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. You know, it's all that same crap, all that same drama. Um, but the problem what we're seeing is, and I get people that call my shop that want a restoration done, and they reference a show. Oh, they, I saw they, they restored that car for $18,000 and they had it done in eight weeks. And I'm like, it's, it's a crock. Like it, that is such, that's what, that could ruin an industry because you get this fantasy, uh, uh, false reading coming from a show. You guys got to remember, this is a production. This is scripted stuff. This is stuff that's edited and you don't know how much footage they have from who knows season to season and they chop it down to a half hour or 45 minute show you know and they're getting a car done in a week it's I cringe they had a guy and he's got a ton of cars and he's complaining he's like you know half a million dollars in the hole because he bought this huge shop and he's got to get all these cars done he's got cars everywhere and someone then comes up from a family owned they had like this big like Lincoln and a 66 Lincoln and it, they're just brushing over it and the guy's like oh hey you know what's your budget to restore this car and the guy's like oh I only got like 13 grand and I'm like 13 grand I would have told him sorry see you later go home the size of this car I mean just materials alone I mean just to do some sort of body and rust repair it's, it's a huge car the guy comes around, oh, I don't know if we could do it for 13 grand, but probably could do it for about 18 grand. And even then I'm like shaking my head, like what? And all will be done in eight, in eight weeks. I, you know, I see that and I'm like, man, this is, this is the delusion that comes across. And of course, then all these workers are cursing at him. Oh, you're under, under budget, or, you know, you're under, you're undersold them, you know, that sort of thing. This is going to go way over budget. Of course, that's the drama. And then they got to hit the deadline in eight weeks. It's, you know, it's all blah, blah, blah. So just guys, you got to understand, like I, I, when you even read about Chip Boost and his overhaul show, you know, those cars, it's taken them sometimes three to $400,000 to finish those cars. That's a sick amount of money, guys. I mean, it's just it's a little more realistic, of course, when you see the amount of work that he does. And, uh, you know, and, and don't get fooled that, you know, he says like they get it done in a week and they got this crew. You don't know how true that is. I found, you know, editing mistakes where you can find a hole because I guess, you know, I'm a filmmaker, you know, so I can see where editing holes are. He jobs out the paint. He sends it to a paint shop and... I saw one episode, I think they send the car out and then they're talking to the painter and the painter like slips out of his mouth that he's 1500 hours in the paint and body work of the car. All right, well, simple math. You're not, you're not getting that car done in a week then. You know, just right there. They slip, there's a hole and you know, they, but they make the show 
you know, look like he's getting it done in a week. It's just very, very, uh, it's very minimally possible. I mean, I guess you could do it. You can haul ass and get a crew and do this, but for the most part, uh, it's just not, it's just not there. I mean, and then there was another show where I saw a beetle get sent into a shop, which was kind of up our alley, so I definitely wanted to see this. And the car overall was pretty solid. And of course, the owner of the business was saying, hey, you know, um, I don't, we don't know how bad this is going to be until we media blast this and see what's going on. Bah, 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 bah. They media blasted, of course, the car is not as bad as it was, as, they, as he thought it was going to be. So it had a prior restoration. So they gutted the car, took it off the chassis, and they repainted the car. Now, they, they painted the car nice, wheel wells, masked off, made black. So they did really little to no body work in the wheel wells. Black in the trunk, black in the um, engine area as well, black under the hoods. So you had a painted shell convertible, uh, painted. They did very little assembly. It was basically just like it looks like they just did an interior once they put the car back down. No motor build, none of that stuff. And um, wound up charging the guy like $48,000 or something. And basically looked to me like a glorified paint job. And they did an interior kit, which was TMI, not an expensive kit. So, you know, you, you get a real mix of bag online, guys. And um, it's uh, you, don't be fooled. You know, when you see some shows where these guys are getting this stuff done in a matter of weeks and they're charging ridiculously low prices, you gotta really be careful what you see on TV. Guys, this is fantasy, this is scripted. And take it from me, somebody who's been in production, someone who's done uh, video editing for the past 22 years, um, you know, and in, and in film production as well. I can see where it's it's so scripted. And you, you can see how badly scripted it is because you know, you're trying to get non-actors to act, and you can see how they're acting. Um, especially like when I watch porn stars, I used to like porn stars, but now you see like they're adding drama to it, like non, like stupid drama that just doesn't like who cares, and they're trying to act, and you could tell they're acting. So you got to really be careful. Um, so when you see these shows, just really be uh, on the lookout, and just be take it with a grain of salt. You know, you want to get a price breakdown of what it costs and what it takes to do a resto. I have done videos on this before and um, I've spoken to shops across the country that are telling me that I'm too cheap. Some saying, holy cow, how are you charging that? You know, so I get a different mix of bag, but you know, some established shops that have been around for 20 plus years are telling me that I'm too cheap. Um, that And I'll be honest, I might fall behind sometimes when it comes to pricing certain things. I'm already catching myself with cars that signed on to me over two years ago, and I'm doing the final tally. And yeah, I underestimated what it was going to cost to do the full restoration, but I got to stick with the price that I gave them. So I got to be a little more uh, up to speed with that because um, parts prices, guys, have been increasing. And paint and body work and body shops are increasing their prices as well. They see the demand in these cars. They see the demand in restorations. And uh, they have to make it worth their while too. And when I tell certain people that, you know, paint jobs are 10, 15 grand, sometimes more, you know, I know it scares people when they hear that. Um, but, you know, you are, this is not a backyard job. This is not something that, you know, we're scuffing and shooting. You know, this is going down to bare metal. We're getting the top quality sheet metal from either Wolf Parts or uh, restorationpanels.com. So, you know, you talk to any established uh, restoration shop, okay? Not somebody that's just doing this in his backyard or on his property. And you ask them what it takes to do a full restoration. You gotta put beetle out of the way. You gotta put bug out of the way. It's, it's at that point where, okay, it's just a beetle. How could you charge me that? It's not that, it's, it's a restoration now, you know? Um, a Porsche 356, you know, those early Porsches are, you know, the big brother to the Beetle. I mean, very similar parts, very very similar uh, mechanics to them, and yet look what they charge for a restoration. Parts are way more, I know, for a Porsche than a Beetle. Uh, but, you know, if it's a Mercedes, it's an Isetta, it's a Fiat, whatever it is, you know, um, it's restoration cost. It's not so much the name or the brand of the car that you have to, you know, that I'm going to you focus on there. Um, people tell me all the time, oh, but it's just a Beetle. How could you charge that money? Well, let me break it down for you, and I'll, 
I'll tell you why. Why is it, you know, 350 to 400 to sometimes 500 hours to tear down and reassemble a beetle? Um, you know, when you're starting from brass tacks. So, um, just wanted to get that out there. I saw this show the other day, and oh my gosh, I couldn't believe they were throwing out prices like this: 18 grand, 15 grand to restore your car. And this was a monster car. I'm talking a boat. That's something that's. I mean, you could put the beetle in the trunk. <laughs> you know. So, and when they said like 18 grand to restore it and they'll have it done in, in eight weeks, and it's all this rust on, and I'm like, oh come on, that's a that's a bad message, you know. So don't be fooled. But um. Anyways, that's it. Uh, vlog number 13 in the bag. Um, I am going to be, I think I told you last week, I'm going to be taking a, a digital detox break, I think, from all this stuff. Uh, so if you don't see me much in September or October, we are super busy. I got shows going on and I got trips going on uh, that we're taking. So, um, you know, I did, you will see uh, today I'm going to be releasing uh, two videos on dubs for dummies so be on the lookout for that and I actually hired a filmmaker uh, to come in and shoot me and shoot the the shop and and uh, shoot the these two episodes so uh, I actually know this kid for for years I used to substitute teach in a high school that he used to go to so he remembered me and uh, I bumped into him um, one day and uh, I didn't know he became a filmmaker as well so uh, pretty cool we'd give him a shot and uh, see how it goes I'd love to hear your feedback on it so all right guys Vlog 13 in the bag. August is gone. I'll see you guys in September. Oh, one last thing. One month from today is my vintage air-cooled, New York vintage air-cooled Treffen. So I'd love to see you guys there. Uh, it's always a good show. It's our third year doing it. And uh, it's in a beautiful location, guys. 25 bucks to get in. Spectators are free. So you can have as many guys as you want in your car to bring in. It's just 25 bucks. So um, come out. Come support that show. It's for a good cause. There's another car show that goes on in conjunction with me, so it's good to always branch off, and you can see those other beautiful cars, but we have our own section dedicated ju to just Volkswagen. So uh, any air-cooled VW, Porsche, come along, be a part of this show, the New York Air-Cooled Vintage Treffen, September 29th, so uh, a little less than a month away, and uh, I hope to see you guys there. All right, any comments, questions, shoot them over to me. All right, peace. Um, um, um.